What's up guys, welcome back to Newswave. Well, yesterday, Microsoft made the announcement for their business event. They gave us the date, the time, and the format, which seemed to confuse a bunch of people, which we'll go over that here today. Also, we are gonna be talking about a report that broke yesterday ahead of this business event that basically tells us which games from Xbox we can expect to go multi-platform first. And GTA 6, it's slated to come out in 2025, and some were hoping it might be earlier in the year, but based on some recent filings, Looks like we might be waiting a little bit longer. Guys, if you enjoy these videos, make sure that like button helps it a ton. And if new here to the Spawn Wave channel, make sure you subscribe down below. And of course, for members, don't forget, you get Newswave early and ad free. To learn more about that, check the join button down below this video. And we're gonna start today with Helldivers 2, which has been in the news quite a bit recently because it turns out it's a very popular game, especially on PC, where we have those Steam concurrent player counts that are actually approaching 200,000 players at any given time. But unfortunately with that come issues with the servers that actually appear to be a bit overloaded. And in fact, there's one bug that has people frustrated when they're playing the game itself because it actually halts progression completely. Well, this we can see posted up by the CEO at Arrowhead, sort of explaining the situation here with the server maintenance that they had deployed for PC. And they got very, very technical as to why this was happening, citing uh, different limits for these servers themselves. I mean, really, they broke it down into, into full numbers, to the minutes, everything. However, they did also mention that reward issue. And while they're working to mitigate it, it has not been resolved fully. Now, they did deploy a patch on PC. This was posted up over on their Helldivers official X account, saying we have released a patch for PC players that addresses server capacity, login access, and progression and mission reward. So, uh, the reason we're seeing it on PC first, really ahead of PlayStation, there has to be certification and, and verification, those sort of things happening on the PlayStation side. It just takes longer, apparently. So it appears the PC version, I guess, is getting fixed up. And uh, it is something I've run into on the PlayStation side. And I'll admit, it's very frustrating to go through like 30 minutes of a mission, doing everything on the map, and then get really nothing. Medals, currency, experience, none of it. So hopefully they're able to fix that for the PS5 as well, but I guess we'll see in the coming days. Also, we did have Sega once again comment on Sonic Superstar sales. This posted up, we can see over on IGN. Now, this was taken from apparently a financial warning that was issued by Sega. They say in the consumer area, although we released some new titles in Q3, including Sonic Superstars, Endless Dungeon, and Total War Pharaoh, sales went sluggish during the holiday sales season, I do want to point out that this is, has has nothing to do with something like Like a Dragon, Infinite Wealth, or Persona 3 Reload, since those came out after uh, the holiday season, obviously, here. But it would include uh, The Man Who Erased His Name, Persona 5 Tactica, and Football Manager 2024, alongside of really what would have been leading the way, that being Sonic Superstars. Unfortunately, probably the timing that it released, of course, same week as Super Mario Brothers Wonder, Spider-Man 2, and then the price point also was something that people had discussed quite a bit. Sega did kind of cut that down. They put it on sale during the holiday season, but I guess still wasn't enough to move units up to a certain expectation. Cause it's still done decent enough, but seems like they wanted a bit more out of Sonic Superstars and maybe in the long run, it'll be able to reach it. But for this past holiday season, wasn't able to. Oh, and it appears we have some rumors circulating around 2K maybe taking up the mantle for FIFA and developing their, their football game, which this this came about here, we can see, this is posted up by Kira Cassis, says my favorite FIFA game, 2K2, whoops, 2002 FIFA World Cup. Now, they did come back and clarify a bit more as they cite now, uh, well, it's an old rumor, they want to tell us that a LEGO 2K goal announcement is right around the corner and it's planned to be released around Euro 2024, which means it should be coming out sometime in June or June or July, which yeah, they would have to make that announcement here pretty soon then. I Maybe it's going to be in, uh, it could be in a direct, I guess, from Nintendo, technically, if it's something they're planning for that platform. But I don't know, I'm interested to see what they can do with it, an arcade uh, soccer or football game with the, the kind of the Lego IP attached to it. But sounds like we don't have to wait too much longer to see it. And guys, with some of the quick news out of the way, let's get into the bigger stuff. Let's start right away with Xbox and the, I mean, the, Big, big week ahead for them right now. They have now made it official, by the way. We can see this posted up over on Xbox's official X account, where they say, please join us for a special edition of the official 
Xbox podcast. Hear from Phil Spencer, Sarah Bond, and Matt Booty as they share updates on the Xbox business. And I mean, they have a little card here, February 15th, 12 p.m. Pacific, 3 p.m. Eastern time. By the way, February 15th, that's the same day that's rumored to have a Nintendo Direct. Are we going to have a Nintendo Direct? And then also this Xbox podcast that is really going to explain the future of Xbox for us. I guess technically if the Direct is earlier in the in the day, it could be in the morning like uh, 9 a.m., 10 a.m. Eastern time. Even if it's technically noon, that would still give time between, obviously, the Xbox podcast and that. But still... A podcast that seemed to catch a lot of people off guard. You feel like it would have been a press release or a video that would have just been pre-scripted and put together to be more to the point. A podcast kind of brings about the idea of more discussion. And like, for example, I did notice a commie posted below sort of an image from a, a, a podcast that they had kind of discussing Activision's acquisition with Xbox during that back in October. And... I kind of feel like this is the exact sort of thing we're going to see. It being more of a, I guess, kind of a round table discussion, sort of. Again, they named Sarah Bond, Matt Booty, Phil Spencer, all being in attendance here. And my only issue with this is it's probably going to be a longer show, technically, as a podcast. And it it might be a point where they sort of go through the, the really go through all the things they want to lay out, but then also come back and say it's a case-by-case -case basis for games. And I just don't know if that's a great strategy necessarily. And people have wondered if the new branding is going to be Xbox everywhere, as again, expected to release games on, on Nintendo's platform, on PlayStation 5, but... It just seems like, based on it being a podcast, there is a lot to explain, or just a lot of nuance they're going to try to hit on that wouldn't necessarily work on an Xbox Wire uh, post, although they might follow this show up with that just to have something at least in writing. And I do wonder if they're going to field maybe questions or concerns directly from the community since... Technically, it's in this podcast format. You can have the host there, maybe bring up some of some of these different tweets or things. I, they didn't ask for any questions ahead of time. And it seems like this is something they were planning out anyway later on in the month, and they've moved it up a few weeks. But still, I, I do believe them hitting on some of the key points and concerns from the, the community would be a good idea. But again, the big one, you got to double down on hardware if you are indeed staying in the hardware race. And it seems like Corey and Phil Spencer, they are after he at least had this internal meeting, just meeting, just going over that and kind of instilling confidence going forward. But he has apparently been liking a bunch of tweets for if people take that as like any kind of indication as to what their path forward is for handheld stuff. So we've heard rumors around this hybrid system from Xbox and maybe they're going to go down that path. The fact that Phil Spencer is out there at least acknowledging some of these tweets and messages people are putting out around the OS on things like ROG Ally for Windows, needing a, a bit of a facelift to work better in that form factor. It's just outright, hey, we think Microsoft's making a handheld for the gaming scene. So I wonder if that comes up. Surely hardware will, but obviously they're going to talk about the game. So which ones are going to be making the jump? Next up, let's talk about just that. As there was a report that broke yesterday from The Verge that details really their plans for the first couple of games and then also consideration for others that will be making the move. And sounds like maybe they got word of what's going to be announced really at this event when it comes to specific titles, which we can see this posted up again over on The Verge. They say Microsoft prepares to take Xbox everywhere. Again, wondering if that might be some of the branding, Xbox everywhere. Anyway, they say the first two games that are set to appear on rival consoles are Hi-Fi Rush and Pentiment, according to sources. Microsoft's also currently planning to launch Sea of Thieves on non-Xbox platforms later this year, with other first-party titles also under consideration and again this is the big this is the big difference here okay so it seems like hi-fi rush pentiment those are more or less planned out they're set in stone we've seen the update that was data mined from hi-fi rush that really confirms that it's coming to at bare minimum the playstation but also probably the switch but starfield and indiana jones would be the ones under consideration as in they're kicking it around behind the scenes in the boardroom, trying to figure out if they could make that work in some way, whether it's, again, a timed exclusivity thing for Microsoft's Xbox titles going forward, or if would it really hurt things if two years from now Starfield made the move over to PlayStation, as they do apparently have at least 
the idea of building on Starfield for quite a while. I'm sure they're, look at Bethesda's history. They'll probably be like a complete edition. They've already discussed DLC, uh, updates and improvements going forward. So eventually they'll wanna bring all that together in a, in a new release for Starfield. And maybe that's something that does make its way to the PS5 eventually, but still under consideration at this time. Now, Hi-Fi Rush, I think is the big one people are gonna look towards. I feel like some will see Pentiment and be like, eh, all right. But then that also plays into the whole idea of people might be kind of overblowing what's gonna happen this week for this event, because if those are the only two games that get announced, it feels like people did go, uh, a bit crazy over the last week or so with all the stuff that was getting thrown around and some of these big time titles making the jump. And then it's really Hi-Fi Rush with people who are already kind of accepting. And then Pentiment that I feel like most people haven't played. And between the two, I think Hi-Fi Rush has a chance to find a whole bunch of new customers on other platforms because I did run a poll for this one, which we'll look at later on, but something tells me there are many people out there who are probably ready to play Hi-Fi Rush even for the first time, just on a Switch or on PlayStation. But again, we'll see as we get closer to Microsoft's event if anything else gets out there, or if we just have to go through maybe an hour or two podcast of Phil Spencer, Sarah Bond, and Matt Booty explaining the future vision of Xbox, or I guess we might be calling it Xbox Everywhere. Next up, let's talk about Tomb Raider 1 through 3 Remastered. It's out tomorrow, and it's, it's still on sale, I think, but it's basically $30 for the three original Tomb Raider games that you have may, may have played back on the original PlayStation. This is done by Aspire, and I'll admit, some of the features they've discussed for this collection been pretty appealing. I, I like the idea of going back to these games with, yes, uh, updated visuals to a degree as they're still trying to stick very close to the source material and then also the modernized controls. And if you're a big trophy hunter on PlayStation, uh, they have like 200 some odd trophies. I guess that also would probably translate over to Xbox when it comes to just achievements in general. But we had some videos go up with gameplay and I gotta, I gotta say, I, I like what I'm seeing here. So I, I noticed Game Informer, uh, and, and I also noticed IGN both did videos. Game Informer more or less went over some of their thoughts for basically the, the preview that they were doing here. And they did note that you can go in and change basically everything on the fly. So they discussed the idea of the controls, going from modern controls to classic controls. And back in the day, the controls for Tomb Raider were set up with a D-pad for a 3D game because it's on the original PlayStation, right? In this case, though, eh, maybe not going to translate as well to joystick. So this would be more or less kind of set up like Tomb Raider Legend that came much later. And I do like the idea of being able to change between the original, original visuals and the newer remastered visuals on the fly with just a press of a button. Sort of like what we saw with the Master Chief uh, where we had the the original Halo get the anniversary edition treatment. You had a button, you go back between the original and the, and, the, and the newer visuals. And there was a pretty big difference here for Tomb Raider where you could see things like foliage pop in and out depending on which mode you're in. But I think this should be a pretty interesting release as most of the newer generation of gamers really just know the Tomb Raider 2013 trilogy. And there are many people who look at that and they're like, okay, the games themselves are good, but it didn't really feel like classic. Tomb Raider. Well, you'll have a chance to go back and revisit that one for about $30 starting tomorrow. And I will be picking this up, checking it out, and probably talking about it on the podcast uh, later on this weekend. And in our last bit of news, let's talk about Grand Theft Auto 6, which had a, a wild release for that initial trailer, which got leaked out. And then Rockstar said, hey, you know, here you go. Take the trailer. You guys can check it out. We'll release it on our own terms Sort of, but uh, either way, the trailer comes out, it explodes online in terms of popularity, crushing 100 million views in honestly a couple of days, not even. But people of course got to the end of the trailer and saw 2025 and they're like, oh really, it's that far away. But there was a glimmer of hope. Maybe early 2025, it won't actually be like two years away. Well, seems like it might actually be pretty far away as we can see this posted up, this over on VGC. Now they are citing Wedbush Securities analyst Nick McVeigh and Michael Pactor, who on Friday said that the game appears to have slipped out of its once anticipated early 2025. This is based on guidance that was provided by Take-Two's latest earnings because 
you're gonna notice if GTA 6 is around since it will make a noticeable impact on any sales figures that they're providing. They say we can only surmise that GTA 6 has slipped out of fiscal year 25 in line with our earlier expectation. Management had said that next year's bookings number will be just over 7 billion, a far cry from its initial comments of 8 billion in May, and its first revision of just under 8 billion in November. The drop makes us almost certain that GTA 6 will not be released until next fiscal year. With that said, we have no reason to believe the game has slipped out of calendar 2025, but it is reasonable to assume that it will launch later in the year. Yeah, I mean, if you're going to release GTA 6, you're not going to lower your expectations for sales. Again, that's going to make a huge impact. We've seen the amount of money that GTA 5 has brought in, and I'm sure there's an entire online component to GTA 6 that we don't even know about yet, and the amount of money that's going to make is going to be absolutely stupid, right? I mean, just take a, take away the, the $70 price tag that they're going to sell GTA 6 for, some of you even wonder if they might go for 80, but let's say it's 70. You know the microtransactions, the shark cards, whatever you want to call it, will be there. And the amount of people online day one is going to be through the roof. That said, the fact that it most likely won't be early 2025, I'm starting to think this would be lined up for maybe a September or October release in 2025. So yeah, we're still about a year and a half away from GTA 6 coming out. Now, it's going to be a landmark moment when it releases. Probably will be the biggest release we've ever seen in video game history. But I guess on the way to release, we'll have Rockstar and Take-Two releasing trailers to introduce different characters or areas or, or different story events even, and eventually again, the online itself. So they'll probably play it out to where there is at least some stuff for GTA 6 in the news every couple of months for... Yeah, it would end up being the next year and a half, but it, it's going to be a lot of fun when we get closer to that release date. It's going to be something else. And before we go to the comments of the day, we're going to take a look at the poll that I posted up yesterday. We're asked, have you played Hi-Fi Rush? Look at this, 73% say no. So again, Microsoft, I'm sure, is doing a lot of consideration behind the scenes. And they probably have data looking at how many people have played Hi-Fi Rush on their platform especially on like Game Pass, how many downloads have there been? I think they've announced like 2 million plus players for it. So I guess Microsoft looking at that says, you know, there probably would be a bunch of people who would check this out if we had it on PlayStation or Switch. And I do think this game would do pretty well on the Switch. And I guess if Microsoft does that, maybe they can justify putting millions of dollars and even five to six years worth of development time behind a full-on sequel for it, or maybe just another game in that universe. But then I guess... For consideration's sake, Starfield might not necessarily need that boost of awareness because it's big Bethesda project. It's it's a game that did really, really well at launch. A lot of people playing it. They announced you know, millions and millions of people, no sweat, uh, playing this game. But Hi-Fi Rush, yeah, probably could use the boost from the Switch or the PlayStation to really make that franchise something bigger for Microsoft. And we'll finish up with the comments of the day. You can see here. We'll start with Face, who says, really wish Kojima would just be able to make a Metal Gear Solid 5 follow-up to finish up Venom Snake's story, and a Metal Gear Solid prequel to give us a more full story for the boss and the philosophers. Well, that is in Konami's hands now, and I don't think there's a lot of confidence there. At least they're in Konami's mind, I guess, playing it safe a bit by just doing a remake of Metal Gear Solid 3, not trying to play around with the timeline or the lore, technically. Eventually, you feel like... They would have to if they want to continue the Metal Gear, I guess, franchise. But we saw what happened with Survive. Didn't go over, didn't go over great. So, unfortunately, Kojima and Konami, they're just, I don't, I don't think they're ever, ever going to work together again. And most likely, Kojima is just about to make Metal Gear Solid without actually calling it Metal Gear Solid with his new Fizzant uh, action espionage style game. But yeah, after playing through Metal Gear Solid 5, it's... It's an unfortunate end to that one because there, I'm sure there was still a lot Kojima wanted to do with that game and it just kind of feels like it's, it's cut off right at the finish line. And then we're going to go over to a comment from the members news wave section, which we can see this is posted up. This is from Jimmy who says, watch Mario Kart 8 Deluxe continue to get more content even on the new Switch system. It must be really funny. We were just talking about the, the next Switch system being backwards compatible. There's a good chance that Mario Kart 8 Deluxe just keeps selling. It could still be on store shelves three or four years from now, and it's still just be in the, in the financial report. I was like, sold another million copies this past quarter. Even with a brand new Mario Kart, like just on sale, there are people who probably prefer Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. And I'm sure at times Nintendo looks at the sales and I'm probably just scratching their head. Like how did we have 
a port of a Wii U game come over to the system and it sold 60 million copies. Absolutely ridiculous. But shows the strength of Mario Kart in general, which is just the strongest franchise for Nintendo right now. And you feel like, if that's the case, you launch the next system with it. So maybe we're getting pretty close to a new Mario Kart. I hope so. It's been a long time. 2014 is when Mario Kart 8 Deluxe can actually we're coming up on the 10 year anniversary here, just a couple of months. And ladies and gentlemen, that's gonna do it here for Newswave. If you enjoyed this video, guys, hit that like button. If not, hit the dislike. Leave comments down below about everything we talked about here today, or is Microsoft's Xbox business event set for this week? Is it strange that it's a podcast? Let me know if you're expecting something a bit different there. And then also, what about Hi Fi Rush and Pentiment maybe making the move to PlayStation and Switch? Would you pick either game up on those platforms? And what about the Tomb Raider Remastered Collection? Are you interested in grabbing that one tomorrow? Thanks, guys, for watching, and I'll see you next time.